Howdy folks, and welcome back to World of Tanks with the Mighty Jingles, and I have a pretty damn impressive battle here on the Fisherman's Bay map for you today, featuring Veroskis in Sweden's very own Tier 10 tank destroyer. As all the Swedes in the room hiss and threaten to walk out, it's not tank destroyer, it's a tank jingles, yes, yes, I know, I know, but it's in the tank destroyer line here in World of Tanks. The Stridsvagen 103B, the mighty, mighty S-Tank. Now, I am compelled to warn you all, well in advance, this is a slow battle to get going. He's in a very, very low profile, sneaky, fast tank destroyer. And at the beginning of this game, like the first half of this game, he's pretty much going to be playing your traditional sneaky sniper tank destroyer role. He's going to be camping bush like an unfair plane right at the start of this game. Um, but trust me, it's going to be worth it because the payoff on this match when it happens is pretty spectacular. The beginning of the match he's going to take up a covering position here in order to give supporting fire to his team assaulting the mid ridge in the centre of the map here on Fisherman's Bay and he's knocked that tree over completely on purpose. He's done it to provide him with some concealment as he activates siege mode and he gets ready to use this devastating 105mm gun. Now when he sent this replay in he did warn me that he acted like a bit of a dick in chat towards the T32 on his team and it's right here that he's just about ready to finish off this STB1 tier 10 medium tank very very dangerous machine and he's unable to finish him off because this T32 plants himself right in his line of fire and then fails to finish off the STB1 himself. Viroskis begging and pleading with the T32 to move and get out of the line of fire but it's too late. The STB1 has gotten away intact albeit with a fraction of health remaining but he's going to survive for quite some time and prove to be a bit of a problem for the rest of the team. Pretty much all because that T32 blocked Veroskis and wasn't able to finish off the STB1 himself and you can't really blame the T32 here. I mean he wasn't aware that Veroskis was aiming at that target. He's more concerned with what's going on in front of him than what the rest of his team are doing. A couple of hundred meters further back behind him. Um, and that is basically what Veroskis wanted to apologize for. I'd didn't think it was that bad. From the email that accompanied this replay, I was expecting him to be yelling at that guy, calling him a noob, demanding that he uninstall the game. You know, the sort of thing that you see happen in just about every game of World of Tanks that you play, but no, that was it. That's, <laughs> that's what he felt he had to apologise for. Um, okay, fair enough. Um, didn't think it was that bad, but if you feel like you need to apologise for your actions, then who am I to stop you? From here on in, at least for the next couple of minutes, you're not going to see an awful lot other than the outlines of enemy tanks and these leaves right in front of Veroskis's gun barrel. You know what he's doing here, it's not an aimbot, he's holding down the right mouse button and just moving the sight to left and right while still keeping, or at least he was, the gun on a fixed point of bearing. So, sitting here in siege mode. And what's actually happening here is it's the suspension that's moving the gun, because the gun is on a fixed point of bearing. Right? It, the gun has no traverse, it's not like other tank destroyers where the gun can swivel from side to side. And in order to actually track the target and turn the gun towards them like this, what's actually happening here is in siege mode the suspension is turning the tank and therefore the gun. It's a mode that's unique to the higher tier Swedish tank destroyers alone. No other machines in World of Tanks operate like this. So seems like a good time since he's going to be sitting here for the next minute or three to talk about the S-Tank. What's good about it, what's bad about it and why should you get it? Well, okay, what's good about it? It's got the second highest damage per minute, it's got the highest accuracy and aiming time and its regular non-premium ammunition, which is armor-piercing composite rigid, has the second highest penetration of non-premium ammunition in the game. 309 millimeters of penetration with a rate of fire of 8.57 rounds per minute gives this machine nearly three and a half thousand damage per minute and those are stock values that's before you add all the kinds of equipment that you're going to see this thing with on the battlefield things like medium caliber tank gun rammer things like ventilation premium consumables perhaps coffee and cinnamon buns for the swedes brothers in arms on the crew when you take all of those things into consideration you can get the rate of fire of this thing's 105mm gun up to 11 shots per minute. And that gives it a damage per minute just short of 4,300. Absolutely ridiculous. At the moment, Veroskis is demonstrating one of the other fantastic things about the S-Tank. It's exceptionally good mobility. It'll do 50km per hour. 
forwards and backwards. This thing actually has a crew of three. Both the driver and the commander are the gunners. They sit in the front of the tank on either side of the gun. And immediately behind the driver, on the left hand side of the tank but facing to the rear, is the radio operator who is also another driver. And he drives the tank when it's going backwards at up to 50 kilometers per hour. The tank doesn't actually need that three crew. Uh, it's capable of operating with just one, providing he's sitting in one of the two front seats. You can see the way the suspension works here. And look, just did you see the sloping deck? Can you imagine just how difficult he is going to be to penetrate? Did anybody shooting at him over that road embankment? Good luck with that. <laughs> Oh, he's going for the IS-4. What's this? The IS-4, of course, is the slower and more heavily armoured of the two Soviet Tier 10 heavy tanks, the other one, of course, being the IS-7, which is the more mobile of the two Soviet Tier 10 heavies. Just, just wait until this IS-4 gets going. Admittedly, he is going down a hill, but at the same time, remember, this is the slower and more heavily armoured of the two Soviet Tier 10 heavy tanks. Look at it go. <laughs> There you go. That's slow and heavily armoured for you. <laughs> oh, Wargaming, don't ever change. <laughs> anyway, uh, where were we? Oh yes, the S-Tank. Um, <laughs> so, uh, Jingles, what's, there's, you know, what's, what's bad about this tank? It's got amazing mobility, it's got exceptional gun handling. Well, it does, but it can't have them both at the same time. That's the trick, you see. You can have Siege Mode with exceptionally good gun handling, damage per minute, accuracy, rate of fire, aiming time. Or you can be quick. You can't have them both at the same time. That's the trade-off. And it takes time. Not a huge amount of time, but it does take time to switch between the two modes. And if you get caught switching between those two modes at the wrong time, this tank is tied for the lowest health of any tier 10 machine in the game that isn't artillery. And the Object 140 has just taken out the Rheinmetall Scorpion and has been set on fire and extinguishes the flames with one hit point left. And Varoskis got spotted. Artillery did listen to his warning and has relocated. Now he and the Geschutzwagen E100 are now the last two machines left alive on his team against six enemies. Okay, one of them does only have one health, but an Object 140 on one health is just as dangerous as an Object 140 on full health if you can't get your gun pointed at him. And now it's on. Somebody's capping, although I suspect they're just driving through the cap zone to get down here and finish off the last two tanks on the enemy team. Yes, they are. There's the IS-4. Swings the tank around, IS-4 stops, sees him, takes a hit. Object 140 closing in, slams to a halt, engages siege mode, manages to kill the Object 140, but the T-92 was waiting for it to stop and hits him and does over a thousand damage. The IS-4. Tunnel visioning here has not yet realised that the GWE-100 is closing in from the other side. And I was fully expecting the GWE-100 to get a shotgun kill here, but it's actually better than that. <laughs> Amarak pops his turret like a champagne cork and does it in mobility mode. Remember, this gun fires straight ahead of the tank when you're manoeuvring at these kind of speeds. He's going into siege mode now, and then, with the M46 and the T-34 closing in, decides better of it. The GWE-100 is dead, he's the last tank left alive on his team, and in mobility mode scores another hit on the M46. He has 37 health remaining. The pattern has high explosive ammunition with 53 millimetres of penetration. The T-34 has a 120mm gun with high explosive ammunition with 60mm of penetration. Now I'm not trying to tell you how to play your tank, but maybe instead of bouncing on the piercing of the heavily sloped upper glacis of this S-Tank four times in a row with the M46, maybe if you try to ram him or possibly switch to high explosive, he'd be dead by now. Same goes for the T-34. Maybe, if you hadn't missed the first shot you fired, and then the following three shots were all derped right into the heavily sloped upper glacis of this thing with armor-piercing ammunition, you wouldn't have to watch yourself being humiliated by an S-Tank in mobility mode, handing a Tier 9 medium and a Tier 8 heavy tank their asses on a silver plate. But you didn't switch to high explosive, and you didn't try to ram him. 
And so you get your 15 minutes of fame on YouTube. And the T92 misses once again. And oh, there's a Carnarvon. Now pay attention to this because this is important. There. The Carnarvon has blown his tracks off. And an S tank with its tracks blown off cannot turn the gun at all. Another tank destroyer in this kind of situation would still be able to traverse the gun a certain degree to the left and to the right, but not the S tank. It's completely incapable of shooting at anything other than where the gun is pointing once it's been immobilized. So don't sit in front of it. <laughs> What's wrong with you? And more importantly, switch to high explosive. What is wrong with you people? They're seeing a tank here on 30 health and they're thinking, one shot, that's all it's going to take. Aim for the... Oh, I don't know where the weak spots are. I know, now I'm dead. And now it's gone from six against two to one on one. And that T92 must be shitting bricks. <laughs> As Veroskis goes on the hunt once again and almost gets tripped up by the decapitated turret of the IS-4 that he executed earlier. But with the obstacle successfully negotiated, he gets underway and goes looking for that pesky T92 artillery. Now he only has 30 health remaining. And the thing about the T92 if he's firing premium high explosive ammunition, he can land a shot within 10 meters of you and still kill you. In fact, the shot that hit him earlier and did 1006 damage, that wasn't even a direct hit. It did 1006 damage and didn't even hit him. You sound remarkably confident of that, Jingles. How can you be so sure? Well, he's still alive. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> this thing has 25, actually, no, 20 millimeters of roof armor. If the T-92 had actually hit him with a high-explosive shell, uh, there'd be parts of him scattered between here and Kansas. <laughs> the fact that he's not dead yet tells me with a, a fairly large degree of certainty that the T-92 didn't actually hit him. But that's what the T-92 does. And you can guarantee he is going to be camping bush like a boss. So, the high stealth rating of the S-Tank, and it is one of the, among many other things in World of Tanks, that it is one of, if not the best at, it also has one of the highest stealth ratings. That's not going to be a huge amount of use, because he's having to move. And you don't get that stealth rating when you're on the move, because you're not a light tank. Uh, and he's having to cross open ground, where there isn't any concealment. So, with the T-92 Gimping Bush, just about the only thing going in his favour right now is the very bad view range of the T-92. Oh, careful there! Oh, that wouldn't have done <laughs> if he'd accidentally crashed himself there. Uh, that would have been a bit of a heartbreaker. But yes, the T-92 is not used to having the spot targets for itself. It normally has surviving teammates around to do that for it. Um, so that's just about the only ace that Veroskis has up his sleeve at this point as he's going hunting for that pesky artillery. Now, He's guessing that the T-92 was up in this top northwestern corner of the map, based on the shots that the T-92 was able to take at him as he was dogfighting in mobility mode with an M46, Object 140, IS-4, T-34 and the Carnarvon at the same time uh, around those buildings. But, well, that was some time ago, and the T-92 could easily have relocated, and he's not up here. He is, however, over there. Engage siege mode. Shit, he's pointing this way. Get a shot off. Disengage siege mode. <laughs> get back. Get back. Get... Oh, and it looks like we're going to live. Baroskis plays a very, very dangerous game here. Remember that T-92 only has to land a shot within just under 12 metres of him to finish him off here. But I'm pretty sure I heard a gunshot there. Now, I'm not sure if Baroskis had heard the gunshot as well, but I think that T-92 just fired and... Well, I didn't even see where the shot went. So, he's, he was definitely thinking about going for it, trying to spot him in that bush again. And then sanity prevailed, and hang on a second, in mobility mode I'm one of the fastest and most manoeuvrable machines on the battlefield. And the T-92 isn't, and now that I know where he is... Oh, there he is. Engage siege mode, fire, and win. And that is a pretty impressive collection of medals to go with his ace tanker, top gun and high calibre. The M46, T-34, to a lesser degree the IS-4, and also the Carnarvon, basically just gift-wrapped in the steel wall, cool-headed and spartan. This tank, with its 40 millimeters of frontal armour, bounced nearly 3,000 points of damage. And all because pressing 3 on your keyboard is really, really hard.
Still, Boroskis isn't complaining. And not only that, thanks to the over 9,000 damage that he did in that game, he also completed Tank Destroyer Mission 15 for the Object 260 with honours. And I suspect Voroskis would also like to extend his thanks to the IS-4, Carnarvon, T-34, M-46 and Object 140, without whose inability to find the three button on their keyboard, Tank Destroyer Mission 15 for the Object 260 would also probably not have been possible. Oh, and if the T-32's watching, he's really, really sorry. He didn't mean to yell at you. As always, of course, it's Wargaming who has the last laugh, because despite the fact that he did not fall short of 10,000 damage, and I don't think he fired any premium ammunition, he still lost money on that game. <laughs> With the premium account. Oh, Wargaming, you so silly. That's it for today, folks. I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.